Hello everyone, uh, I just thought to make, uh, make a short video to introduce the version 1.6.2 of the World Atlas of Last Interglacial Shorelines uh, because we have some news and the interface changed a little bit so maybe uh, it's useful to give a quick overview of this. So as usual we can log in from here. Uh, the first screen didn't change much, I just hit a few things, for example the general information is here. Uh, here we have the legend and we can navigate now in the legend uh, and I divided basically the different uh, dating techniques so you can turn them on and off as you wish to mean a sense for example etc. Uh, another new thing in the map is that you can for example search the name of a, a place, you press enter, then you scroll down, you press enter and then you can basically see um, uh, see the name, uh, the, navigate to the place that you that you wanted. Uh, okay, besides this, uh, uh, let me open up all the interfaces here. Uh, there's not many changes on the help and credits. Uh, uh, I added here all our video tutorials. Uh, also, this tutorial will be here, but there's not many changes. The bug report is uh, still there. If you find any bugs or if you want to uh, put anything, please uh, um, put your bug report here. We will receive an email and we will try to uh, get to it as much as possible, as quick as possible. Um, for which concerns, the, uh, let me show you first of all for which, the news for which concern the insertion of data. Now, if you remember the previous versions here, you had lots of fields. Now we basically condense them into fewer ones. For example, um, once the metadata was a huge menu here, uh, but now you basically have the same choices by um, clicking on this menu voice and um, you can access uh, as before, the different forms. Uh, there you go. Uh, another news on these forms, which are the metadata forms, is that we put them in a, a table format. So, for example, if you want to edit one of the ones that you inserted, you can do that now by simply clicking this little button here and you can modify uh, these values and then you can save them. Um, or you can add a new one with the same uh, um, uh, with the same uh, um, process. Uh, there's not much new for the references. Uh, references, uh, the references is still the same, more or less. So that uh, didn't change too much. Uh, some changes happened for the dated samples. Now, before in the dated samples, we had all these dating techniques all together. Uh, but now we basically uh, put them in here, so you can basically select which dating technique uh, dating technique you want to insert, and then uh, you can uh, you can click on them. Uh, this brings me to a very uh, important thing, a very important difference from the previous version of the database. That is that um, we divided basically the U series between samples that are only used for dating, so only for their age, or samples that are used also with the relative sea level determination. In this field, you will only add samples that you use for only with for as age constraints. So you select your dated material. Uh, you have a little disclaimer here to advise you of what I just said, and if you click OK you will be directed uh, to the um, insertion mask. This is basically the same one uh, that was addressed uh, in, a previous, uh, um, in a previous tutorial. The very interesting thing is that uh, as we go into the sea level data points instead, uh, it takes a bit, yeah. Uh, now we have three different choices at the very beginning. One is the sea level data point from stratigraphy and we can have a look at this. This is also always the same uh, as in the previous tutorials where you will be able to basically um, insert, uh, for example, stratigraphic ages or UCD ages by selecting them inside uh, the database. So this did not change, but uh, now you have the possibility as well to insert a relative sea level data point from a single coral and a relative sea level data point from a span of them. The form, uh, for example, for the corals is basically the same as the real series, uh, uh, but you have 
uh, some fields more, and in particular, you have this paleo C level, uh, this paleo C level field. And here you will be able to insert data uh, on the um, on the paleo water depth of the coral. Uh, for example, here in the sorry in the ecological metadata, for example. Uh, you have the upper limit of the living range. So if you have a coral that lives from, say, 0 to minus 10 meters, you can add that. Uh, but you also, we will also ask you to um, insert a median part of water depth. So this coral would live between 0 to minus 10 with uh, a median depth, uh, median model depth or model depth of minus three meters. So this is very, um, this is very necessary for uh, paleo water depth considerations and whoever is gonna analyze the, the database afterwards. So uh, some news on the, uh, some news on the interface, the same goes for spellothems. Uh, there are some uh, um, spellothems that of course, for example, uh, the phreatic overgrowth on spellothems that can be used for uh, policy level considerations. And here you see that you have policy level, sorry, policy level from uh, spellothem uh, here that is a required field. So if you insert one of these data points, uh, it will be, uh, uh, it will have a few more additional uh, mandatory fields. So now uh, on to the access to the database. Uh, we changed a couple of things here. First of all, from the publicly available data, um, we are not allowing at the moment uh, um, to have a full uh, access to the database. Uh, um, just because uh, lots of people have started to put their data in, uh, in view of the special issue. So you have here this disclaimer, and we actually hope to have uh, a complete database and a reviewed database, uh, hopefully by the end of 2020. Uh, what is public are the references that we all put in, uh, because basically through this, anyone can search the papers and have an idea of uh, uh, the different papers that we have in the database. By far, the most uh, interesting thing uh, also here we coupled uh, or we, we grouped a few things together uh, is the My Data section, which is uh, quite new. We still have our maps here. So if we want to see our data points, I really hope my connection is helping me out here. Not really. Anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, here we have we should have the map uh, when it will appear. I will have it here. Uh, but we can also have uh, uh, tables for which concerns the summary of sea level data points. So we can have summary of sea level data points from stratigraphy here, for example. These are all the points that I inserted. Uh, it's a shortened version of the complete data table or the complete uh, data that we put in. This is mostly data that is relevant for uh, elevation, policy level, and ages. We can also select uh, through the columns button some uh, more columns that we want to see in there. And we can export everything as a PDF or as an Excel uh, into the, into our, on, on our uh, desktop. Uh, the same goes for the corals and for the single spellothems uh, that can be um, that can be downloaded from here. But by far, the uh, let's say the news by far is the uh, exporting function in terms of spreadsheets. So if you go here to complete data tables, you can click on export spreadsheet. Uh, what happens is that uh, we made a Python script that runs on the background. Uh, it takes a little bit, maybe 15, 20 seconds. But what it does, uh, it makes uh, um, a nicely formatted Excel spreadsheet out of your data. And we think this is uh, actually quite um, uh, useful uh, if you want to annex your data as a, as a supplementary material to any publication or to the special issue we're preparing. Um, and so uh, it's it's quite useful to have it. Uh, the drawback of this is that, uh, as you see, it takes a little bit. Um, you can check that it's running by looking at this, um, waiting for, 
down here. Um, okay, and now that it's ready, it will open a nicely formatted Excel spreadsheet. Here you have the summary data again, and here you have every single uh, data point that you entered, basically. So this is, uh, for example, all the U series that I entered on corals uh, and all the information that I entered. Well, you see that basically uh, this is uh, something which can be really useful. You know, these are all the amino acid racemization ages that I that I entered in my database. So you can basically review your data from here and maybe um, you can actually use this to update the database. It has been uh, fairly uh, fairly uh, useful for me in the last few days to, uh, while I was testing to basically um, update my database if something uh, if something wasn't um, uh, wasn't done properly. And here you have all the references that you used throughout um, throughout Wallis. You can basically copy all this and paste it in whatever reference list uh, you like. Once you are happy with it, you save it and you save it on your computer somewhere, and that's uh, that's uh, uh, your uh, Excel file. So, on the background, we are working on the spreadsheet to improve a little bit the README and to give some summary tables. Uh, it's gonna come out in the next uh, the next few days probably. Uh, we're gonna be able to to put it out. So. In the end, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't show the maps here, but uh, my connection is fairly slow today. Um, but in the end, uh, what we uh, what we have is a new version of uh, Wallis. Uh, is the 1.6.2. Uh, we are about uh, uh, done, I would say, with the database infrastructure. Um, if you have suggestions to improve it or to change it or uh, to improve some fields or the description of some fields, please do not hesitate to, uh, to tell this to us. Um, you can also access the read the docs here um, as in a previous, uh, as explained in a previous tutorial. Uh, we are going through the process of updating all of this, but it will take some time, unfortunately. Okay, until the next time.